Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to another video from your boy, Gore the Movie God. That's me. I'm tough. So, I am here to talk to you about a little season called Summer. Yay, Summer. It's hot, unpleasant, it just you it makes you want to die. It's, it's just a miserable, miserable month, especially in New York. I'm sure it's worse many other places, but New York, it's pretty bad. Um, and... Yeah, it's a miserable summer, uh, season, but you know what? It's not miserable when it comes to big budget stupid ass movies because tons and tons of them come out. Don't get me wrong, there are some good ones in there. And some of those big budget ones are really good, but there's some good little indie stuff and lower budgeted thrillers and horror movies and stuff that do come out. But every summer, it seems like, ooh, we're just setting us ourselves up to be disappointed because we're just so pumped for the summer. It's like, yeah! All these movies are going to come out and they're all going to be great. Suicide Squad, nothing's going to be wrong with that. It's going to be muy perfecto. It's going to be genius. I love it. I already love it. I haven't even seen it. It's going to be amazing. It seems like every summer we set ourselves up for disappointment. And this summer was no exception because man oh man was there a ton of disappointing movies and to make this list quick so I can get on to other ones I made this one only a top five the other ones are gonna be top fives too but this one I could have made it a top ten I could have made it the best and the worst top tens too but this one I could have easily talked about each one of them for a long time but I decided I'm gonna cut this one short make it try you know try to make this video quicker than the other ones because I'm sure the worst and best are gonna be very long but I'm gonna cut this one short and tell you this is the top five most disappointing movies of summer 2016 again disappointing does not mean terrible you know actually I don't I wouldn't even say any of these movies are terrible I was just really looking forward to pretty much all these you know, varying degrees, but I was really looking forward to all of these, and they all left either average or below average, or maybe a little above average, or maybe okay. That's none of these are great, none of these are even really good, but they're not terrible. So let's get to it with, of course, number five. Number five. The Legend of Tarzan. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, You were looking forward to this? Yeah, I was. I really liked all the trailers for this. I'm a big fan of the Tarzan character. I even read, uh, I think, the original book when I was in like, like middle school age. I was I was really into the Tarzan character. I loved the Disney movie. I even loved the uh, 1980s one where he's he's back at home, just like this movie is uh, called Greystoke. I think it had Christopher Lambert in it. I thought that was a really good movie. I even I even really enjoyed some of the older classic ones. Um, and I just really was left disappointed with this. This is a very average movie. C considering the trailers were so epic, and I don't use that word loosely, okay? It's not like I call everything epic. I'm not like, this is epic, this is epic, I'm epic, you're epic. Like, I don't, I don't throw that word around too much. But this movie, w like, was advertised like, this is going to be an epic, sweeping, just jungle movie about a man who fights with his eight people to save the jungle or whatever. They didn't really explain what the story was, to be fair, in the trailers. But that's what I thought it was going to be about. And really, it's not. It's just a bland story about a guy that I guess is Tarzan, even though they make him seem more like a superhero with superhuman strength and stuff. And it's just really lame. It's so average. Everything really is average. The acting, the visuals, the visuals are, the visuals, yeah, the visuals are even below average, even though they, I thought they looked pretty good in the trailer. Um, <laughs> Alexander Skarsgård was an average Tarzan. Um, the villain was very weak, considering it was Christoph Waltz, you thought he would be better. The only one that I would consider really good in this was Samuel L. Jackson. Everybody else was Bland meh, characters, even Margot Robbie as Jane was blah. Um, but yeah, even like the action and the the even even the cinematography, a lot of it's just CG and it's just real bad CG and it's just not a great movie and it just left me wanting a whole lot more and hopefully, I mean, this movie didn't do terrible, didn't do great considering its budget was like. 180 million dollars which i don't know why they thought that was a good idea i mean it did decent i think it made almost 400 million dollars worldwide but i don't think it made its money back completely so the tarzan character is not dead we'll see him again in a movie but 
why $180 million? You don't need to make $180 million Tarzan. You can make a Tarzan movie for $100 million easily. Like, you don't need to make add that $80 million to have shitty special effects. Like, where did that money go? It definitely didn't go to Alexander Skarsgård. Who the fuck cares about Alexander Skarsgård? Unless you watch True Blood or the Straw Dogs remake. Like, who cares? I don't know. It was just a very, very disappointing movie. I don't really have much to say about it because it's such a blah one. And it's a movie I instantly started forgetting right after I saw it. So there you go. The Legend of Tarzan is my number five. <laughs> number four. My number four is Warcraft. And this one hurts a little bit because I am a huge fan, not of the video game series that it's based on. I am a huge fan of the director, Duncan Jones. That guy is excellent as a director. Even after this misfire, I still say as a director and he has like he's actually focused on something he actually wants to do, not the studio bullshit. He is great. He really is. I mean, he did Source Code, which is my favorite movie of 2011 still. Love that movie. I've seen it countless times. And Moon, same thing except that came out in 2009 and I think that was like number 3 on my list, but it, it might even be up there. You know, it might even be number one. I have to watch it again. But those two movies are so excellent. Mwah, magnificent. I love both of those movies. Two of the best sci-fi movies you can watch from the 2000s easily. Like, And there's a lot of really good ones. So I'm not saying like, oh, these two are, you know, I guess they're okay. I mean, you know, I mean, they're better than everything else because everything else sucks. No, it's, it's pretty, been a pretty good 16 years of sci-fi, let me say. Um, but... Warcraft was his first misfire. Sadly, this movie was just just filled with special effects to the brim. So much special effects, and for the most part, it was okay. But there's so many times where you just like you feel like you're just watching one of those countless cutscenes for a World of Warcraft expansion. Uh, you'll see as an ad on YouTube, except it's going way too long. The story itself is simple. It, it, the characters aren't really all that likable because you don't really get to know any of them. The acting is fine. Uh, some of the mocap actors do a pretty good job of portraying the orcs. But it's just a, kind of a lifeless and dull movie with no real fun in it. It's just a very slow moving movie with some good parts here and there. Mostly to do with the orcs. But the orcs aren't really, even really the front and center. Really it's mostly the humans. And I could I can understand because probably it costs way too much to have all those orcs render and and have all the mocap actors portray them and stuff. You know, like I, I don't know how much Toby Kebble costs to rent out. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he's a storage space. But um... I, I, it probably costs a little bit, so you know. Let's focus on the humans a little bit, um, a little bit more. But I just didn't really care for it overall. Like I don't really have much to say about this one too. Just like Legend of Tarzan, because there's not really much to say. It's just kind of a simple movie. There's a war. There is some craft in there. Number one, two, three. All right, so my number three movie is X-Men Apocalypse, which, oh, this one, even though I will say I, I enjoyed this movie quite a bit, this one was disappointing when it comes to just how the story was presented and how the characters were fleshed out and the dialogue, how, how really cheesy and corny it was. It, it just felt like a completely different director directed this one than the guy that directed Days of Future Past and the first two X-Men movies. This is still Brian Singer. I'm pretty sure it's the same writers as Days of Future Past, uh, which I think Brian Singer maybe co-wrote. I'm not, I'm not sure. But this movie just feels so strange. Like, the, that last one, special effects-wise, it was, like, really good. Almost top-notch, I would say. The acting was great. There were so many dramatic moments. The dialogue was just just freaking tight. It was really good. And there's so many really good character moments. This movie, I don't know what happened. It was just straight up stupid ass action. There's a big 30 minute action scene at the end where everybody's getting you know, throwing cars at each other and stuff and freaking Magneto's destroying the entire world with his metal bending powers and shit. And I'm just like, what is going on? Why? And to top it all off, the special effects are awful. The special effects were like I Am Legend quality, where it had a huge budget, or even Tarzan quality, I guess. Even though Tarzan was 
bad but not really awful. Some of the apes look pretty good. Pretty much all the special effects in this movie look terrible. And sometimes they, they were cheesy when they had to be cheesy. Like, they looked cheap when they had to. Like, during the Quicksilver scene, that was supposed to be a, a very cheesy moment. So the special effects kind of worked with it and made it funnier. But when it was, like, dramatic action at the end, a 30-minute battle between Apocalypse and all these other X-Men and stuff, it was so bad. The young cast is pretty good. The cast itself does a, do, a, a good job with the acting. And Magneto's and Xavier's relationship is still interesting, even though it's way smaller in this movie than it was in the last few movies. Like, the, their relationship almost doesn't even, like, they, they don't even butt heads until, like, the end of the movie, I think. And... The whole time, I'm just like, I just want it to be another X-Men movie. Like, at this point, I, I get it. They're trying to do something different for an X-Men movie. Most X-Men movies don't do this, where it's just stupid action, unless it's the third X-Men movie. But I just wanted it to be an X-Men movie, like what Days of Future Past was, where, you know, the, the biggest thing that happened, Magneto lifted a stadium, sure. But in this one, Magneto destroys an entire fucking city. Stadium? City. Like... <sighs> I don't know, it, it's just really, really lame. Also, the villain's lame. Apocalypse is a lame-ass villain, played by a great actor, Oscar Isaac. So, that was disappointing. So, there you go. X-Men Apocalypse. I did a whole review, so if you want to watch my review, go check that out. So, anyway, there you go. My number three is X-Men Apocalypse. <laughs> number two. Oh, number two. Suicide Squad. Oh man, I really, you hit the thumbs down button because, uh, yeah, it's my number two. It's not my number one though, which is very surprising considering I was so freaking excited for this movie. The trailers were excellent, so well done, so well edited, and the music and the characters themselves. I was already falling in love with some of the characters just from the trailers and the little clips that you got, and even the soundtrack trailer they had during uh, uh, San Diego Comic-Con this July that passed. I was like, yes, I am pumped. I'm pumped, baby. It's been a whole year of just build up for this movie. I'm pumped. Let's go see it. And it was a mess. It was such a mess. But it was still an enjoyable mess. It was an enjoyable one, kind of like X-Men Apocalypse. It was still enjoyable. It was just a real big mess. Like, things just didn't feel like they belonged. Like, scenes were really, really dark. And then it was really happy. Not, not happy, you know. It's not, not sunshines and rainbows and Teletubbies and shit. But, you know, it was, it was really, like, comedic. And then it was really dark. And it, it just didn't mix well. And I know a lot of DC fans are like, Well, you got the humor you wanted since Batman v Superman, how come you don't like it now? Because it doesn't mesh well when you have all this dark stuff and then all this happy, funny stuff. Eh, mush it together. And you get this really weird yin-yang dumb bullshit. Like, it was just really messy when it comes to that. Not only that, the villain is one of the worst villains I've ever seen in one of these movies. I don't think I even talked about that in my review for it. I mean, I t we talked about the villain, I said it was bad, but I didn't really mention that. I really do think, after seeing this movie twice, this villain is extremely lame. It really is a lame villain. I, we, I will, I'm not going to spoil it, just in case you haven't seen it yet, but I will admit that the villain, the things it does made me laugh, like just the, the weird movements and stuff, made me laugh. And, I, you know, I was a little attracted, I will say that. I don't want to... I don't want to say anything more. I don't want to spoil it in case you didn't see it. But I was a little attracted. But besides that, it's just a lame villain. And just that the action was really not well filmed. Most of the time when there was action going on, it was dark out. So you have this like really quick cut like action style where it's just like, whoa, whoa. it was like Jason Bourne or the Bourne, uh, what was it? Like the Bourne Ultimatum and stuff where it's really quick cuts. Except that movie, it worked because it was supposed to be very jarring. This one it doesn't work at all all it doesn't work at all you can't tell what the hell's going on <laughs> I, I couldn't figure out what was going on for the life of me through at least three of these action scenes um some of the characters are likable even though a lot of them get sidelined like katana and uh boomerang and and uh el diablo even though he has one really good moment he, he also has one really stupid moment towards the end of the movie but there's so many characters i was like yeah i want to know more about the character oh it's gone that character's gone. Oh, the character's in the background. They're not doing anything. 
And of course the Joker. The Joker is barely in it. And eh, maybe that was for the best because I didn't really care. I mean, I liked I liked him as the Joker. I just didn't think his role in the movie was really needed. Like he didn't even need to be in the movie. So if there was more of that unneeded role, it might have just taken away from the movie even more. So maybe that was the best thing to do. But overall, it was just a very, very disappointing movie. I was so looking forward to it. It might not be as bad when it comes to scores as the other three movies that I talked about, but I was excited for this one way more. It's not worst movies, this is most disappointed. And considering how excited I was for this movie compared to the other three, this one really disappointed. So there you go. My number two, even though it's still a fun movie, at times, Suicide Squad. So now let's go on to my number one, which this one, this one broke my heart. This one broke my heart. Uh, Fredo, you broke my heart. It's a movie. And number one, that's me. <sighs> this one, you know what? This one stings way more than any of the other movies. It might even sting worse than the worst movies I saw for this summer. Because I'm going to say right here, the worst movies I saw for this summer, most of them I already knew were going to be bad, so they were bad. No big surprise there. This movie I was really expecting to be good, and to be honest, I would actually put this right now on my top 10 worst movies, maybe maybe top 15 worst movies of this year, because this one really just took everything I loved from the first three movies, threw it on the ground, and curb stomped it. It, it was so, so bland, and routine, and generic, and just straight up forgettable. Of course... Of course, I am talking about Nine Lives. No, I'm just kidding. I'm talking about Jason Bourne. Like, I, am a, I love the first one. The first one is actually one of my favorite movies ever. The Bourne... What was it called again? The Bourne Identity. <laughs> I had to think about it. Born, there's so many The Bourne blanks, so I had to think about it. But The Bourne Identity. I love that movie. I really do. I like how kind of slow it is. It's not really that action-packed. I really like all the character stuff. I really like getting to know this character. I really enjoyed that movie. And then the second and third ones were so excellent. Great sequels. I think those three movies are one of the like one of the best trilogy of movies out there. A lot of people say, you know, mo most trilogies kind of fail when it gets to the third one. Like even Godfather. Some people say Star Wars, even though I love all the three of those movies. Mm, to me, I really think the Bourne movies just nail it. I mean, I like the first one the best, but technically the third one is the better movie. Uh, just what, just the camera work and the action and all that and, and just how visually impressive it is, especially with some of the camera work, like when he's jumping through the roofs. That's the, that's the third one, right? Well, whatever. Anyway, it's just a great movie, great series. And this one just took everything from that and just made it so bland. It was such a pointless story. The story here is they're going to do another Treadstone. Jason Bourne wants to learn more about his daddy. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's fucking it. That's it. Like, that's it. Nine years of waiting for this motherfucker to come back. And it, it, Treadstones is going to be a worse Treadstone. This is going to be a word. Vincent Cassell's going to come and kill you. Vincent Cassell's going to kill you. So you better run, Jason. Like, it's just so generic and dull. I've said generic so many times, but that really is it. And and that sucks because the Jason Bourne character is a really likable, very, very intense character, but badass. And in this one, all he does is walk around, looks around. He's on a cell phone a lot. There's a couple times where he, like, I don't know, kicks someone in the face and that's about it. He gets on a motorcycle once and he gets in a car once with a shotgun. But none of it's cool. Like, the only good part of this movie where I was like... Oh, I'm getting a little excited again. It was towards the end, there was a car chase that was really good, but not because of Jason Bourne, but because Vincent Cassell's character, who is probably the best character in the movie, uh, gets into an armored truck and just starts mowing down tons and tons of cars that are in his way. And that, that part's in the trailer. You can just watch that. That's the best part of the movie, and it's in the trailer. Uh, by the way, I should have expected, I should have known this movie wasn't going to be great because not only was the title so bland, Jason Bourne, like all the other ones, even the one without Jason Bourne in it, said the Bourne blank. The Bourne supremacy, the Bourne ultimatum, the Bourne identity, the Bourne legacy, the Bourne bullshit. It did, what, there's so many books still. 
There are tons of other books. You could have named this The Bourne Revival. I would have been fine with that. The Bourne Return. They could have called it The Bourne Return. That would have been perfect. Jason Bourne? What the fuck is that? Really? Jason Bourne. But not only that, I should have been worried day one of the first fucking trailer coming out. Because the first trailer came out like, what, two, three months before the movie came out? Not too much time to really advertise, but not too little time to advertise, I guess. And then, months and months, and then the movie came out, and then I realized there was only one trailer. One trailer came out for this motherfucker. Most movies nowadays get two or three. Look at Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad, like, got four or five trailers. Batman v Superman got four or something. Star Wars even got three. It, three. It, it's just not... It just wasn't advertised well. It just feel like the studio was just like, yeah, I'm going to make a trailer, whatever. Who cares? Who cares? People are going to go see it. You know why? Because people love Matt Damon now because of that Martian and because of whatever the hell else he did. Everybody loves Matt Damon. They're going to go see it. They're going to go see it because he's back as Jason Bourne. Who gives a shit? We can just make up any stupid story. Trade Stone's back, except it's called something else. And it's worse this time. We're not going to explain why it's worse or really show you why, but it's worse. Just believe us, okay? <sighs> did this movie was so not a born movie for most of it. I really thought the movie was going to end with like a, a completely different song than Extreme Ways. If you're a big Jason Bourne or a Bourne movie fan, then you know at the end of every Bourne movie they play that Moby song, Extreme Ways we're back again, Extreme Ways I didn't know, whatever. Um, and I really thought it was just going to end with something else. <laughs> like, like they didn't give a shit that much where it's just like a staple of the series they're just going to forget and say screw it. I just really was disappointed. I, 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 I know I didn't do a review for this because I just, I, when I was done watching, I was just, I didn't really have much to say. I mean, I have a lot to say now after retrospect, but when I saw it, I was just so depressed. I was so lame. I love this series. I fucking, the Born Legacy was way better. At least Jeremy Renner was a character. I got to know who he was. This Jason Bourne, he does this. He grimaces a lot. And he kicks someone once. It was lame. This is a fucking lame movie. It was just bad. It wasn't even like great camera work. It was Paul Vera. I mean Paul Vera. Paul Greengrass was just asleep behind the freaking camera. It's just I don't fucking care. Well, well, anyway, there was my top five most disappointed movies of this summer. And um, yeah, look forward to the top five worst, which I'm sure I'll get even angrier d during, and the top five best. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Until next time, goodbye.